Behind me is a place that could be on the verge of solving one of the biggest mysteries in the universe. What is the Higgs boson? <laughs> this is the, the stumbling block. We need to know if this particle exists or not. Ten years after the Higgs boson particle was discovered, the world's largest science experiment is still attempting to unravel the mysteries of our universe. The European Organisation for Nuclear Research on the outskirts of Geneva simulates the aftermath of the Big Bang by sending protons hurling into one another at close to the speed of light. Despite the achievement in the physics community when the Higgs boson was discovered in 2012 and public relief that the experiment did not suck the entire world into a gaping wormhole, there is still a lot to discover. Imagine the scientific community's delight when a Large Hadron Collider recently discovered something entirely new. What has the Collider discovered recently? What was the reason for keeping it hidden for so long? Join us as we investigate CERN Research's incredible discovery that changes everything. On September the 10th, 2008, scientists at the European Organisation for Nuclear Research Laboratory in Geneva successfully flipped the switch for the first time on the Large Hadron Collider, kicking off what many people call the most important scientific experiment in the history of the world. The $8 billion LHC is the world's largest particle accelerator, made up of superconducting magnets that allow engineers and physicists to study subatomic particles such as protons, electrons, quarks and photons. The 17-mile underground ring located beneath the Swiss-French border sends particle beams at close to the speed of light, causing them to collide and recreate debris caused by the Big Bang. Some scientists and environmentalists speculated at the time of the LHC's launch that it would create a mini black hole that would end the world. CERN and physicist Stephen Hawking refuted these claims, claiming that any mini black holes would evaporate instantly. The LHC is used by scientists to test theoretical predictions in particle physics, particularly those associated with the Standard Model. While the Standard Model can explain almost all particle physics discoveries, several issues remain unresolved, including the nature of dark matter and dark energy. Why is matter more abundant than antimatter? The LHC is designed to help with such questions. If you see a news story about strange new subatomic particles, chances are they were discovered at CERN. In January 2022, scientists working at CERN announced that they had found evidence of X-particles in the quark-gluon plasma produced in the Large Hadron Collider. The startling reality is that CERN was successful in reproducing a scenario that hasn't happened naturally since a few microseconds after the Big Bang. The discovery of the Higgs boson in 2012 was the LHC's crowning achievement. Although it is known as the God Particle, it is not as wonderful as the name implies. It was significant because it was the last unproven prediction of the Standard Model. Peter Higgs and Francois Englert proposed in 1964 that the particle associated with a mass transmitting energy field was the key to understanding how everything in the universe acquires mass. The Higgs boson, however, is far from the LHC's only discovery. According to the science journal CERN Courier, the LHC has also discovered approximately 60 previously unknown hadrons, which are complex particles made up of various combinations of quarks. Despite this, all of the new particles remain within the confines of the standard model, which the LHC has struggled to exceed, much to the chagrin of many scientists who have spent their lives researching alternative ideas. The first tantalising signs of a breakthrough appeared in 2021, when the LHC data analysis revealed patterns of activity that indicated slight but distinct deviations from the standard model. This was the discovery of ghost particles, or neutrinos. Imagine if we were able to capture a ghost and say the spectre belonged to someone who had died. Everything we know about the universe would be changed. A ghost particle is a big deal for the same reason, which is why scientists were trying to trap them. They're ecstatic, and here's why you should be as well. They are some of nature's most enigmatic particles, capable of passing through the Earth as if it did not exist. On the other hand, they are the most common type of particle that can be found in the universe. Every second, nearly 100 trillion neutrinos pass through your body completely harmlessly. 
The fact that neutrinos do not interact with other particles very frequently makes detection difficult, but this does not imply that they never interact. The likelihood of any individual neutrino interacting with another particle is simply very low. But what exactly are neutrinos and why are they causing such a stir? Neutrinos have no charge, as their name implies. While the mass of neutrinos has yet to be determined, we know it must be exceptionally small. Scientists at Germany's Karlsruhe Tritium Neutrino Experiment determined the upper limit of neutrino mass to be 0.8 electron volts, or EV. An electron volt is the amount of kinetic energy gained by an electron when it accelerates by one volt potential difference. While measuring mass in energy units may appear strange at first, Albert Einstein demonstrated how mass and energy are two sides of the same coin, as described by his famous equation E equals mc squared, and extremely small particle masses are commonly given in EV due to the small kilogram conversion. 0.8 EV is about 1.4 by 10 to 36 kilograms. To put this in context, neutrinos are approximately 10,000 times lighter than electrons. Neutrinos do not have any kind of interaction with the strong nuclear force, which is what holds atomic nuclei together, but they do have some kind of interaction with the weak nuclear force, which is what regulates radioactive decay. Eventually, this is how neutrinos are produced. For instance, the Catron experiment determined the neutrino mass resulting from the decay of tritium isotopes. Although many neutrinos were formed in a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, many neutrinos are still produced today. They form in the nuclei of stars, particle accelerators and atomic reactors, as well as during supernovas and radioactive decay of substances. Despite the fact that neutrinos have proven to be difficult to study, physicists believe that neutrinos outnumber protons in the universe by a billion to one. This is due to their ability to be neutral to the vast majority of compounds in the universe, allowing billions of them to pass undetected through a square centimetre of your body. Most metal-like light beams simply pass through them as if they were clear glass. Unlike other particles, which can be deformed by interactions with other matter, neutrinos carry a wealth of information with them as they travel through space. The study of neutrinos allows us to gain a better understanding of the universe's origins. Neutrinos were discovered while scientists were attempting to solve the mystery of beta decay. The odd thing about beta decay is that it appears to violate two fundamental physical laws, energy conservation and momentum conservation. They discovered that during beta decay, the final particle configuration had slightly too little energy and a proton remained stationary rather than moving in the opposite direction as the electron. In 1930, scientist Wolfgang Pauli proposed that an additional particle may escape the nucleus, bringing the lost energy and momentum with it. However, Pauli was well aware that the particle he had proposed could not be discovered. I've done a terrible thing, he said to a colleague. I've postulated a particle that cannot be detected. Our sun emits a large number of neutrinos, many of which hit the Earth. Scientists set up multiple detectors to detect neutrinos, but their experiments only detected one-third of the expected neutrinos. For many years, scientists have worked to solve this problem, but they have overlooked one fundamental fact. Neutrinos come in three flavours. Ordinary neutrinos, muon neutrinos and tau neutrinos. Neutrinos bounce between these three forms as they travel between the Sun and the Earth. This explains why the first neutrino experiments, which were only designed to detect one type of neutrino, missed two-thirds of the total amount. CERN's discovery was the first time neutrinos were discovered within the LHC or any particle accelerator at all. The breakthrough sparked the subsequent excitement by opening up a new window for scientists to investigate the subatomic world. The LHC's ability to detect neutrinos will help scientists learn more about their role in the universe. Scientists had already trapped neutrinos prior to the LHC's discovery. The Super Kamiokon detector from Japan, the Mini Boon detector from Fermilab and the Antarctic Ice Cube detector were all present. They were all able to detect neutrinos using a technique known as Cherenkov radiation. This Cherenkov radiation technique works in the same way that an aircraft exceeding the speed of sound produces a sonic boom. The particle is intended to pass through a medium that slows light, leaving behind a faint blue glow that scientists are looking for. 
Even though these experiments can detect neutrino signals from the Sun, a number of issues remain. Scientists, for example, are unable to differentiate between the different types of high-energy neutrinos produced when these particles collide in a conventional particle accelerator. Phaser NU is a new detector developed by scientists from the Phaser Collaboration to detect these artificially produced neutrinos. How does Phaser NU function? The Phaser NU is made of solid metal plates of lead and tungsten with multiple layers of light detecting emulsion in between. The neutrinos will first collide with the atomic nuclei in the dense metal plates, producing particle byproducts. The emulsion, which functions similarly to conventional photographic film, comes next. The emulsion reacts with the neutrino remnants, imprinting the tracing contours of the particles as they pass through it. The scientists then create the emulsion and investigate the neutrino particle trails. Physicists can use this data to prove that these particles caused some of the marks. This method even allows scientists to distinguish between the three types of neutrinos that have been discovered. This proved not only that they had chosen the right spot within the massive ring to look for neutrinos, but also that their new detector was capable of doing so. However, now that they have a working detector, the researchers are not satisfied and are developing a larger version of it. This model will be more sensitive to neutrinos. They will also be able to distinguish between neutrinos and antineutrinos, the antimatter counterparts of neutrinos. Could neutrinos be dark matter? Many scientists believe that dark matter can explain the additional gravity that holds galaxies and galaxy clusters together. Dark matter is invisible and interacts with normal matter only through gravity. If it interacts with ordinary matter at all, it does so extremely weakly. Neutrinos are one candidate for dark matter, but only if their rest mass is greater than zero. Neutrinos interact only through the weak force and gravity, which explains why dark matter, unlike baryonic normal matter, cannot be detected through interactions with light. There are also so many neutrinos that even if they only had a mass one five thousandths of that of the electron, the mass of all the neutrinos in the universe could make up for the missing matter. Neutrinos are the leading candidate in the hot dark matter theory, which is only thought to be a possible explanation for dark matter when combined with the cold dark matter theory and not on its own. However, this is not the end of the story when it comes to the LHC. It is inevitable that the results of any particle physics experiment will begin to decline after a few years of continuous operation. Since the device's prime results begin to be completed in later years, proportionally fewer results are seen. The simplest solution is to upgrade the devices involved, particularly in collision energy, luminosity and improved detectors. Along with the potential increase in collision energy to 14 tera electron volts, a luminosity upgrade of a Large Hadron Collider, known as the High Luminosity Large Hadron Collider, began in June 2018 and was expected to boost the accelerator's potential for new discoveries beginning in 2027. This upgrade aims to improve the machine's luminosity in order to improve the chances of visualising rare processes and statistically marginal measurements. The third run is regarded as a transitional stage in a Large Hadron Collider program. The discovery of the long-awaited Higgs boson was the primary achievement of the first run. The major decay modes of the Higgs boson were discovered during the second run. These findings confirm, at least for the relatively heavier known elementary particles, that this particle is the origin of mass. CERN hopes that the new third run, which is scheduled to end in late 2025, will more than double the current LHC dataset. According to CERN sources, the third run will be followed by a longer period of preparation that could last until 2029. By then, the fully grown LHC will have reactivated with a collision rate 10 times greater than the current one. The fourth will most likely last until 2042, and it will collect an ultimate data set that is nearly 10 times larger than is expected at the end of run 3. The accumulation of massive amounts of proton-proton collision data for analysis is critical to the LHC physics. The proton is their preferred particle because it is the easiest to handle and manipulate, allowing it to be accelerated to the highest energies. It is not, however, an elementary particle. Rather, it is a bound state of quarks held together by particles known as gluons, which are a quanta of the strong nuclear force. 
To better understand the LHC collisions, consider the proton as a bag of jelly beans containing quarks, gluons, antiquarks, and even heavier particles such as the W and Z bosons, which are quanta of the weak interactions responsible for radioactive decay. When two protons collide, the two bags of jelly beans will most likely be ripped apart, spilling out particles that will reform into protons, pions, kaons, and other more familiar particles. However, when only two quarks or gluons collide head-on, all of their energy is compressed into a tiny spot and then released back to the quarks and gluons, or possibly to the heavier known and unknown particles as well. By studying and analysing these extremely rare reactions resulting in a tremendous energy release, physicists can get a glimpse of nature's laws at incredibly short distances. As data from the Large Hadron Collider is collected, these experiments will be expanded, resulting in larger and larger samples of these rare reactions. Experts hope that eventually enough events will accumulate to provide irrefutable evidence of a discovery. Seeking these rare hard collisions is a massive data challenge. As bunches of protons collide 40 million times per second in the Large Hadron Collider, with each of these bunch collisions containing at least 50 individual proton-proton collisions. The photographic evidence of these collisions captured by the major LHC detectors, ATLAS and CMS, is then saved indefinitely. Because each of these images is nearly 20 times larger than a typical smartphone photo, storing all of the evidence for just one second would result in a million gigabyte database. However, the majority of the 40 million events obtained in every second of data are simple and familiar, with only a few thousand W boson events and one Higgs boson event buried in this stream. As a result, one of the most important components of each LHC experiment is the trigger, which is a bank of computer processes that selects a few hundred collisions per second for the permanent record that physicists will analyse. Despite its extremely selective approach, the LHC experiment has already produced one of the world's largest computer databases. The LHC's primary goal is now to discover new elementary particles that could provide evidence for previously unknown fundamental interactions. Some of these new proposed particles may be heavy and decay into clusters of quarks and leptons with extremely high energy. Scientists, on the other hand, do not believe that such a particle will be discovered in Run 3. At best, these experiments will provide some interesting statistical hints and possibly some suggestive event pictures with novel features. This will get theorists talking about the high luminosity Large Hadron Collider in Run 4, and more future runs are expected to confirm these predictions. There is currently a real opportunity in searches for weakly coupled new particles, such as those predicted in dark matter models. Because such particles are produced by weak and electromagnetic interactions rather than strong interactions, the rates of such reactions are low. As a result, any increase in the data set could be beneficial. The dark matter particle interacts too weakly to leave a signal in the detectors of the Large Hadron Collider. This is not a problem because, according to Newton's third law, visible particles recoil against invisible emissions. However, in many models, the partners of dark matter particles emit very little visible energy, resulting in minimal recoil signals that are not recognised by the experiment's triggers. Run 3 trigger improvements are expected to improve coverage for subtle signals, while the increased rate will help reduce a sample of rarer events in which the recoiling particles are pushed out into easier view. The enhancement will greatly improve ATLAS and CMS's ability to recognise these signals. CERN, on the other hand, is not without controversy. Max Laughlin, known as the world's smartest kid, has sparked concern among experts all over the world with his proposition about the Large Hadron Collider. The young and brilliant kid was initially recognised for enthralling the world with his insights into how the world works and how humans adapt to each new event discovered in our universe. His new beliefs, on the other hand, are more than just facts, they are warnings. The young prodigy made videos in which he expanded on his claims and the portal that CERN researchers opened. For those who are unaware, he is also an inventor, having created a free energy machine at the age of 13. He demonstrated the technology and explained how the free energy device could change the way humans live all over the world. He has since become well known for his keen observations of fascinating events in our universe. These topics are about our reality and the parallel universe. 
Some of his hypotheses about our world include how CERN experiments are threatening to unravel the fabric of our existence and transport us to a parallel reality more similar to ours. The idea cannot be disputed because European Organization for Nuclear Research scientists have conducted similar tests before. He contended that the machine's experiments had shattered the universe, causing humanity to exist in a parallel reality. Max went on to explain that our multiverse contains an infinite number of parallel universes. Similarly, the number of these universes is infinite. We are thrown into an infinite number of parallel realities in each reality. We had an original timeline, but immediately the anomaly occurred during the experiment, he explained, we were thrown into an infinite number of parallel universes. As we speak, a reality shifts into another universe somewhere along the way. This depiction of infinite universes is our current reality. This anomaly in the space-time continuum was most likely discovered by CERN scientists. After discovering the anomaly, they went in and altered these classic events, proving reality is not what we think it is. The theory lends credence to reports that the European Organization for Nuclear Research is working on creating portals and trying to alter the universe to connect it. Max continued his argument by claiming that these theories about opening portals at CERN imply that there are other universes nearby. And that's not all. CERN is also working on multiple preliminary designs for a circular collider that will be used in the future. It will be the most powerful particle smasher ever built, with a construction cost somewhere between 9 and 21 billion euros. Although not everyone is convinced that the future circular collider is a good investment at the moment, Sabine Hossenfelder, a theoretical physicist at the Frankfurt Institute of Advanced Studies in Germany, has stated that there is no reason to believe that new physics would emerge in the energy regime that such a collider would reach. The large sums involved could be better spent on other massive facilities, such as putting a large radio telescope on the far side of the moon or putting a gravitational wave detector in orbit. Both would be safer bets than a new collider, given that the LHC is yet to finish its third run and preparing for a fourth, both of which will contribute more than enough to particle physics for the time being. And, like all major scientific projects, the LHC is moving slowly, but it is providing us with access to previously unattainable knowledge. Given the success of particle accelerators in exploring the unknown, it's understandable that many scientists want to keep building bigger and better accelerators, and one way to do so is to look into expanding on the LHC infrastructure. Tell us what you think about CERN experiments in the comments section below.